Joel Osteen is a famous televangelist and New York Times bestselling author. Osteen is also the pastor of Lakewood Church, and his weekly televised program has an average viewership of 7 million. But Joel's message is actually not Christian at all. Coming up, I'll be providing a summary and critique of Mr. Osteen's work. What's happening, educated guys and gals? I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Really quick, if you like the content here, subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right, and then hit the bell for notifications. All right, let's delve in. In 2004, Joel Osteen released his best-selling book, Your Best Life Now. Many of the methods Osteen suggests in that work are based upon strategies developed earlier by other successful non-Christian writers. For instance, in The Secret, Rhonda Byrne teaches that humans have the force and the energy within them to create whatever type of life they want. Similarly, in The Shack, William Young suggests that we have so much power within us that we can literally create reality by speaking it. Both of these precepts are based upon a belief belief known as the Law of Attraction, in which people can bring positive or negative experiences into their lives by focusing on positive or negative thoughts. Osteen piggybacks on this philosophy in your best life now. The only difference between Joel versus Byrne and Young is that Osteen sprinkles some Christianese into the mix. In his bestseller, Joel outlines a seven-step plan that will enable individuals to obtain their best life now. And by the way, I want to hasten to say He's absolutely right. If you believe in what he says in that book, this will be your best life. It'll be a whole lot better than the next one. <laughs> he is absolutely right. It, but if you want your best life now, go for his theology. If you want your best life forever, avoid it. Here's some of Osteen's list. Believe. Visualize, speak out loud. Sound familiar? It's the same vocabulary as Burn and Young. Here's a quote, friend, there's a miracle in your mouth. But Isaiah says, woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. Another quote, God has already done everything he's going to do. The ball is in your court. This is what has been known in the history of the Christian church as Pelagianism, an absolute heresy. Here's another quote, you can be better. Now my friends, this is law. I'm not saying that the law is bad, but as Christians we have to think in proper categories. You can be better is not the same as Romans 5.8. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Osteen's statement is law. Paul's statement is the gospel. Here's a longer quote from another Osteen book, Becoming a Better You. Quote, I'm hoping to help you look inside yourself and discover the priceless seeds of greatness that God has placed within you. In this book, I will reveal to you, man, this is pure Gnosticism, seven keys that you can use to unlock those seeds of greatness, allowing them to burst forth in an abundantly blessed life. The essence of Osteen's teaching is more or less the same as the name it and claim it philosophy of the word faith movement. And then he says, how do I know they work? Because I found a perfect parking spot at the mall. That's deep. What about the poor little old lady that was waiting behind you for that parking spot at the mall? But Osteen has added further to his heresy by openly denying the gospel in mainstream interviews. When Osteen appeared on Larry King, he was asked several important theological questions by King. You either believe in Christ or you don't. If you believe in Christ, you are, you are going to heaven. And if you yeah. don't, no matter what you've done in your life, yeah. you ain't. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, there's probably a, a balance between, I believe you have to know Christ, but I think that if you know Christ, if you're a believer in God, you're going to have some good works. Question, what if you're Jewish? What if you're a Muslim and you don't accept Christ at all? Answer. You know, I, I just, I'm very careful about saying who and would and wouldn't go to heaven. I don't know. I think. Question, if you believe that you have to believe in Christ, they're wrong, aren't they? Answer. Well, I don't know if I believe they're wrong. I believe here's what the Bible teaches and from the Christian faith, this is what I believe. But I just think that only God can judge a person's heart. I've spent a lot of time in India with my father. And, uh, you know, I don't know all about their religion, but I know they love God. And I don't know. I, I don't know. Give us some men who know the truth. <laughs> and who will stand with Athanasius and Polycarp and Calvin and Luther and Whitfield and Edwards. And who will declare from the housetops that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I agree with you, Steve. Not one mention of God in that. Not one mention of Jesus Christ in that. That's just my message. There is scripture in there that backs it all up. But I feel like, Byron, I'm called to help people. How do we walk out the Christian life? How do we live it? 
And these are principles that can help you. I mean, if there's a lot better people qualified to say, here's a book that's going to explain the scriptures to you. I don't think that's my gifting. Then may I suggest, Mr. Osteen, please remove the title church from your ministry. Mitt Romney, and, and i got to ask you the question, because it is a question whether it should be or not in this campaign, is a Mormon a true Christian? Well, in my mind they are. Mitt Romney has said that he believes in Christ as his Savior, and that's what I believe. So, you know, I'm not the one to judge the, the little details of it. So I believe they are. And so, I, you know, Mitt Romney seems like a man of character and integrity to me. Mormons believe that there are many gods, that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are the spirit brothers of Lucifer, and that God was once a glorified man. In the King Follett funeral discourse, Joseph Smith stated, we have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see. It is the first principle of the gospel to know for a certainty the character of God and to know that we may converse with him as one man converses with another and that he was once a man like us. This is blasphemy and a complete contradiction of scripture. Yet Joel is comfortable in saying that Mormons worship the same savior as we do. Do you not get hung up in, in those theological issues? I probably don't get hung up in them because I haven't really studied them or thought about them and um, you know I just try to let God be the judge of that. I, I mean um, I don't know I, I certainly can't say that I agree with everything that I've heard about it but from what I've heard from Mitt when he says that Christ is his Savior to me that's a that's a common bond. In summation Joel Olstein is an agent of Satan and his ideology contains a false prosperity gospel, which is in complete contradiction to the true gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're a regular follower of Mr. Osteen, I plead with you, stop giving money to him and turn to the true Christ as he is clearly revealed in scripture. Thanks for watching guys. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. Once again, if you like the material on this channel, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. I upload a new video every Saturday. I just want to give a shout out to Spectral Cliffs who suggested Lauren Daigle as a video topic. It ended up being one of my more popular videos and I forgot to thank Spectral for his wreck. So, yassi, Spectral. I hope everyone has a happy new year, and for my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.